If there's one thing these influencers hate doing, it's thinking. Let's strap in and start with... Number six, Mizzy. British TikToker Bakari Bronze Ogaro built his following with extreme pranks, which landed him in trouble with the law. Ogaro goes by Mizzy on social media, posting videos where he breaks into vehicles and homes, harasses people, and disrupts stores. Because we all know how funny that can be to break into someone's house, kids these days. Mizzy soon realized that the more outrageous his actions were, the easier it was to build a following. People just love train wrecks. Back in our day, we just had Tom Green. Mizzy's other pranks included tampering with a train's controls and stealing, but returning an elderly woman's dog. These sound suspiciously less like pranks and more like him just being a jerk. He also posted himself breaking into Alton Towers, Britain's version of Six Flags. Ogaro's actions helped him amass a large following on social media, but his pranks grew more extreme. In other videos, he walked up to young people at night and demanded to know if they wanted to die. You get it, right? The people just think their lives are in danger. They're not actually in danger, so it's funny to laugh at them for being so stupid. Mizzy also walked into a stranger's home and filmed the exchange. The home had young children, and in a video that went viral, the parents repeatedly asked Ogaro to leave. And he's lucky that it didn't backfire. Really, all you parents out there, if some dude walks into your house where your kids are and refuses to leave, what's the likelihood he's not carried out by EMTs? In response to posting videos without the consent of those being recorded and harassing people to get views, Judge Charlotte Krangle is issued a two-year criminal behavior order. The order barred Ogaro from posting anything without the consent of those in the video. She also banned him from shopping at Westfield Stratford City, a popular London mall. A day later, Mizzy violated that order, prompting his arrest. Prosecutors claimed he violated the terms twice by posting other videos without people's consent and visiting Westfield Stratford City. Divisive television personality and journalist Piers Morgan interviewed Mizzy. During the shutdown, Ogaro stated that hate gets likes and views. He he also claimed that British laws weren't strong enough to stop him. He was proven only half right when an undercover officer arrested Ogaro for breaching his criminal behavior order. Ogaro entered police custody and admitted in a court appearance to one count of failing to comply with the community protection notice a judge issued in May 2022. His first court hearing happened hours before the publicly scheduled time to avoid press attention. A judge granted him bail on the condition that he stayed at home with his mother and awaited his trial. Number five, the hospital is that way. Ukrainian influencer Anna Alkim revealed the location of a field hospital treating wounded troops in Ukraine hours before a Russian airstrike. Alkim posted an appeal for aid to her hundreds of thousands of Instagram followers. She said that many military personnel were at the clinic in the eastern Ukrainian city of Dnipro and that they needed help. Russian soldiers then destroyed the clinic and damaged surrounding structures a few hours later. Local media accused Alkim of sharing information that led to the attack. Officials have repeatedly warned influencers and the media not to post sensitive information online that Russia could use against the country. Alkim defended herself on Instagram, saying she was one of the few influencers who used their platform to raise awareness about what's happening to her country. She also said that she volunteered and supported Ukraine from the day it all began. The Ukrainian president condemned the attack as a crime, with the Russians also going after a psychological clinic and a veterinary clinic. The real question is whether or not anyone in the military actually gets their information from influencers on Instagram. Number four, appreciate him now. David Bairton faked his own little funeral in order to teach his family a lesson about cutting him out of their lives. This little stunt probably made sure that they stayed out of it. Bairton was sick of his family not keeping in contact with him or his family. They had all but stopped talking to him or inviting him to family gatherings. So he decided the only way to teach them a lesson was to let them think he'd passed away. So the Belgian TikToker devised the plan with the help of his wife and children, who he somehow got to go along with it. One of his daughters wrote a post on social media where she told her father to rest in peace. She added that he had his whole life ahead of him and that she would always love and think of him. Mourners gathered to pay their respects at his funeral when Bairton arrived by helicopter with a film crew. Relieved, loved ones rushed to greet him with his good friend Thomas Fout sharing a video of the two men embracing. Fout said he loved Bairton very much despite the deception. Bairton explained his reasoning, but at that point, everyone was so relieved that he was alive that they didn't care. Bairton, who's on TikTok, wanted to show his family 
family what the true cost of growing apart and losing connections could be. Roughly half of his family attended the stage funeral, but other relatives contacted Bearton after the event. He felt vindicated that people made an effort to show they cared. The prank affected his followers too, as many believed his story, especially when his daughter posted about her father passing away. While they shared the same sentiment as his loved ones, that they were glad he was alive, the prank received a mixed response. Some followers thought his actions were cruel and deceitful, and others believed he taught everyone around him a valuable lesson. Do you think that it was a good lesson, or did Bearton go too far? Number three, the hardest and rarest cancer. Taiwanese fitness influencer Mayan Bao Bao faked a cancer battle to boost her online presence. Are you as surprised as we are how often it seems that people fake cancer? We're not even superstitious, but if that isn't tempting Murphy, the god of irony, we don't know what is. Mian Bao Bao, whose name basically translates to bread in English, announced her late stage pancreatic diagnosis on her social media accounts. The Taiwanese influencer posted videos of her workout sessions and cancer treatments with hashtags such as fighting cancer daily. She deceived everyone around her and was secretive about how she received treatments, even to her husband at the time. Whenever she went for a procedure, she insisted that her family leave her at the entrance as she wanted to see the doctor alone. Mayan Bao Bao's medical expenses oddly only cost $275, and her husband said never spoke to a medical professional about her condition or saw proof of diagnosis or hospital receipts from her alleged three years of treatments. Not that this is something he should have been demanding, her getting home from the hospital. You show me that proof of diagnosis, woman, right now! But it's weird that he never saw anything. The truth came to light when Mayan Bao Bao's ex-husband posted details to social media that contradicted her story. She eventually confessed to her 11,000 followers that she lied about having cancer for three years. Her ex-husband claimed she used the diagnosis to separate and move out of their home. Eventually, she asked for a divorce. He wasn't the only person that doubted Mayan Bao Bao's cancer diagnosis. Followers traced the x-rays she posted to social media and found the original photos came from a different source. Although her husband exposed her actions, she was bound to be found out. After all, pancreatic cancer has a five-year survival rate of five to ten percent, and she was already three years into her fake diagnosis, starting with it already being late stage. She offered compensation to the company she did brand deals with and acknowledged that her family and friends were the ultimate victims of her actions. Mayan Bao Bao removed all of the content on her Instagram except for her apology. Number two, delusional wannabe influencer twins. Aspiring influencer twins Jacob Christopher Baez and Jared Christian Baez faced criminal charges for bailing on an $18,000 tab at a Nashville bar. The twins celebrated their 24th birthday with a party at Dirk's Bentley's Whiskey Row. They ran up a $17,874 tab, but appeared to think they were above paying it. The brothers believed they were A-list celebrities and claimed they wanted to hang out in a place where other celebrities could come and not feel any pressure. The brothers Baez said they were representing a non-profit organization named Kingdom Capital Elites, and their goal was to bring A-list members to Nashville. However, there was no company or organization registered under that name within the state of Tennessee or the IRS. The only proof of the organization was its Instagram branding page that had 2,000 followers. If they had considered themselves A-listers just because of 2,000 followers, then pretty much everyone's a celebrity. Jacob and Jared seemed to believe that any press was good press, and when a reporter reached out to them to cover the story, they were excited about the publicity. In fact, their response was that they would be legends for what they did, demonstrating a clear misunderstanding of the word and that their names would soon be all over the news. Their plan was to get Instagram verified so they could grow their online presence and achieve maximum celebrity status. The pair already acted like high-profile influencers, popping bottles and raking up a big tab on the night of their birthday party. But to get the blue check marks next to their names, they would need an additional 50,000 followers. Jacob had 1,904 and Jared 3,551 at the time. They ultimately received the attention they sought, although their audience wasn't their intended fan base. Law enforcement discovered they didn't pay their tab and arrested the twins. Maybe if they had the blue check marks, they could have covered the bill. If you're loving hearing about the dumbest influencers, be sure to stay tuned right on this video for even more curious decision-making by influencers. Number one, barely getting by. 
Stephen Bear tried to make the world think he led a wealthy and glamorous lifestyle, but the disgraced British reality TV star was living a lie. Bear rose to stardom in the UK when he joined the 2015 cast of X on the Beach. Over the next five years, he starred on various reality shows, including three seasons of MTV's The Challenge. His TV career deservedly ended when he shared a private video of himself being intimate with his girlfriend, Georgia Harrison, on OnlyFans and WhatsApp without her consent. Harrison was a fellow TV personality on several seasons of The Challenge with Bear. Bear arrived at his court proceedings dressed in an expensive suit, a fur coat, and a chauffeured Rolls Royce. Even with his legal troubles, according to his social media, he was living a lavish lifestyle. Bear posted about expensive vacations and shared pictures of designer clothing, Rolexes, and gold chains. Bear's Facebook account had pictures of expensive grills with the Ferrari logo. Bear also claims he owns several companies. His most recent one was Cuban Link Limited. You might think that someone so seemingly wealthy would lease a luxurious office space, but he registered Cuban Link Limited's address to his parents' house. And Bear's official role with the clothing and footwear company is shopkeeper. And calling yourself shopkeeper makes us picture him working in some old-timey grocery store, wearing a brown apron, sweeping a wooden floor, talking about the good old days next to a barrel filled with pickles. Bear's position in other companies registered to his name were celebrity and roofer, like most celebrities. Bear also seemed to have a hard time not embarrassing himself. In 2021, he tried to legitimize his university, where he promised potential students he would help them make six figures annually. He did this by tweeting about his crypto fortune worth over $200,000. But his followers quickly pointed out that the screenshot he shared was a stock image used elsewhere. Starting a university was laughable anyway, since all of Bear's business ventures had failed. Even his and hers limited, the joint venture he started with his ex, Charlotte Crosby, ended with Crosby petitioning the court to dissolve the company. Bear couldn't repay the $1,343 he owed the company and an additional 38,000 bucks to creditors. The court proceedings for his illicit video case revealed the truth about Bear's financial situation. The Rolls Royce he arrived in was a pay-per-day rental and his primary source of income was his doomed OnlyFans account where he made $50,000. Bear could barely pay his mortgage and moved home with his parents. Only 273 viewers paid $9.99 to watch the video with Harrison, earning him roughly $2,500. He deactivated his account in December 2022. After the judge found Bear guilty, he received a 21-month prison sentence and was ordered to pay back the $2,500 he earned from the video. He was told he would have to sell his assets if he couldn't pay off the debt. Sounds like he can't coast on his celebrity roofer status anymore. What are some of the strangest decisions that influencers make? Let's get right into it and start with... Number six, Bali Adventure. Kelsey Foster's vacation to Bali was cut short after sustaining a leg injury that got infected. Foster was walking through Bali's famous Legion Street shopping district when she slipped on a tile and rolled her ankle. At the time, she thought it might be a sprain, but didn't want that to stop her vacation. Soon after the injury, Foster was sitting in a tattoo artist's chair for a large tattoo on the wounded leg. The process took 12 hours, and by the end, she feared her earlier fall might have done more damage than she realized. Thankfully, Foster had purchased travel insurance and was quickly flown back to Australia. She went to a hospital to get her leg checked, where she learned the full extent of her injuries. Foster had fractured of her foot and tore a ligament in her ankle. She had to wear a boot, which caused her even more issues. The tattoo also didn't respond well to the injury and became severely infected. People tried to blame the tattoo shop for unsanitary practices, but Foster quickly denied the blame. She insisted the infection was due to the severity of her injury and due to the boot she had to wear. Boot kept rubbing at the tattoo and wearing it so much it prevented the skin from healing. Although Foster was in excruciating pain, she couldn't take painkillers. Doctors told her the painkillers would complicate matters if she had blood clots. Earlier in her trip, Foster donated food to a children's orphanage in Bali. She dropped off essentials like noodles, cooking oil and rice, as well as candy and toys. Foster went to a local family-owned store to purchase the items and took donations from Australian friends to give to the orphanage. With 7,000 followers on Facebook, she wanted to use her platform to help people. 
However, people online were unimpressed by the charitable act after she posted pictures of the visit online. Some saw Foster's good deed as using disadvantaged children for a photo opportunity, pointing out that she wore a revealing dress for the photos. She defended herself by pointing out that it was also 91 Fahrenheit and humid. While Foster had critics, she also had followers that jumped to her defense to say that the posts she made had nothing to do with what she wore and were about the orphanage instead. Number 5. Jay Mazzini Disgraced influencer Jay Mazzini once ran a popular Instagram account until he was discovered to have swindled millions of dollars from investors as part of a Ponzi scheme targeting New York's Muslim American community. Mazzini, whose real name is Jabara Ikbara, was best known for his viral stunts where he would hand out large amounts of cash and had almost 1 million followers on Instagram. He once teamed with rapper 50 Cent to hand over $30,000 in cash to workers at a Burger King in Queens, New York as a thank you for their hard work during the pandemic. In January 2021, Mazzini started buying Bitcoin from other social media users at 3.5 to 5% over market value. He offered to pay $52,000 for one Bitcoin worth $47,000. Mazzini explained that traditional Bitcoin exchanges limited how much he could purchase, so he was willing to pay higher prices. When it came to the transactions, Mazzini would send his victims documents, including images of wire transfer confirmation pages, to confirm he sent a wire transfer to their accounts. When the wire transfers never arrived, his victims launched complaints. The influencer has claimed his net worth was $33 million, so he could easily pay the inflated prices. It was eventually discovered that his bank account was a little short by about, oh, $33 million. Mazzini faced charges of wire fraud. However, it wasn't the only criminal case Mazzini would have to fight. In March 2022, Mazzini pleaded guilty to one count of first-degree kidnapping after a man named Amjad Mashal online threatened to expose Mazzini's crimes. The severity of his charges meant he could potentially spend decades in prison, but Mazzini negotiated a plea deal with prosecutors for a five-year prison sentence instead. Mazzini decided to kidnap and intimidate his opponent, tracking him down in northern New Jersey and taking him for a uh, not-so-fun drive that ended with an assault. He had two accomplices, and one of the three threatened to kill the victim if he called the police. Surveillance footage captured Michelle's failed attempts to run away, only to be dragged back to the car by Mazzini's accomplices. The three kidnappers left Marshall beaten and without clothes. Marshall made the shocking decision to recant his original statement to police after being bribed with a $100,000 payment in return for a new statement that would help release one of his attackers from jail. Authorities charged Marshall with accepting a bribe to change his statement. Mazzini's wife allegedly gathered personal information about the judge and prosecutors involved in her husband's case. Investigators seized her phone data and discovered she had thoroughly researched the judge's family history in order to intimidate. A week after Mazzini's kidnapping charge, federal authorities also revealed Mazzini's participation in another multi-million dollar Bitcoin scheme. They accused him of soliciting crypto from followers at a rate higher than market value, but never reimbursed any of his victims. Mazzini made at least $8 million in the scam, money he spent on personal expenses and gambling. He ran a Ponzi scheme through his company, Halal Capital, between 2019 and 2021. His victims would give him money to invest, which he used for personal expenses and to fuel his Bitcoin scam. Mazzini agreed to pay $2.56 million to one of his followers for 50 Bitcoins, but only sent 500,000. Mazzini pleaded guilty to wire fraud, wire fraud conspiracy, and money laundering, agreeing to forfeit over $10 million in property, $5 million in restitution, and $500,000 in fines. He faces up to 10 years in prison. Someone should influence him to stop scamming. Number four, born again. The state of Texas sued social media influencer Brittany Davis over fitness plans she created that violated consumer protection laws and took advantage of followers with eating disorders. Davis sold online fitness packages through her business, Brittany Dawn Fitness LLC. Plans cost up to $300 and thousands of consumers purchased them. Customers thought they would receive individual plans, but that wasn't the case. Davis was also supposed to provide coaching and check-ins, which didn't happen, minus random messages that offered encouragement but weren't personalized. Customers felt misled and sought refunds, but Davis ignored their requests, and if anyone complained about the situation on social media, she would delete their comments. Davis claimed to have struggled with an eating disorder and used nutrition and exercise to help herself heal. Clients believed they would see similar results, but her plans just pushed weight loss, even for people that didn't need it. At least 14 women suffering from eating disorders reached out to the fitness influencer looking for help overcoming them. Davis posted YouTube videos about her eating disorder struggle 
struggles and offered links to nutrition and fitness plans. The seemingly informative nature of her posts and the links she provided made consumers believe she was qualified to handle these conditions. She wasn't. Some of Davis's clients needed to gain weight rather than lose, but she still encouraged them to follow restrictive nutritional plans. Several clients almost fainted from inadequate nutrition while participating in the program. Davis only provided clients with cardio exercises and low-calorie macronutrient suggestions that inevitably led to weight loss. She posted an apology video in February 2019, but alleged that clients had been harassing and threatening her. In an appearance on Good Morning America, she said she wanted to provide refunds to people who felt misled by her plans. Davis only offered partial refunds and took down her fitness website, BeDonFit.com. The lawsuit also alleged that she charged shipping fees for her products despite being digital. Complaints about Davis's business practices began to flood the Attorney General's office in March 2019. In April 2020, Davis applied for a Paycheck Protection Program loan of $20,800 for her fitness business. Davis eventually took down her apology and other videos. She changed her content from being fitness focused to sharing Christian related content. Despite the outrage around her fitness plans, Davis has amassed a massive following on her social media channels. She moved from Dallas to Fort Worth, claiming she needed to leave the city as it was too materialistic. Davis began hosting She Lives Freed retreats, an extension of her She Lives Freed Instagram profile. Customers paid $125 a ticket, which did not include boarding. Her attempts at separating herself from the controversy didn't work. Attorney General Ken Paxton filed the lawsuit against the influencer in February 2022, where they sought up to $1 million in damages. Looks like her meal plan ultimately included an indictment sandwich served with a side of justice. Number three, only insurance scams. Shauna Lynn Palmer, a beauty contestant, faced workers' compensation fraud allegations after investigators discovered her social media posts. Palmer claimed to have fractured her toe while working as a supermarket clerk. She alleged she couldn't put it on a shoe or stand for extended periods. Palmer reported multiple visits with her doctor, who referred her to a specialist. Supposedly, she was barely able to walk. Then, a YouTube video surfaced of her participating in the Miss Toyota Long Beach Grand Prix beauty pageant, where Palmer strutted across the stage in high heels. A week after the pageant, she returned to the doctor complaining about pain in her foot and left on crutches. Days later, Palmer posted other photos of herself participating in more pageants and events on Facebook. Her social media posts gave investigators proof that she was lying. She pleaded guilty to one misdemeanor count of workers' compensation fraud and was sentenced to 36 months of probation and 50 hours of community service. Additionally, she had to pay $5,000 in restitution and a $1,000 fine. That's a pretty big bill she's going to have to foot. Number two, guaranteed returns. Instagram influencer Hader Atef was arrested in Cairo, Egypt, and accused of defrauding vast sums of cash from over a dozen people. Atef gained 2.5 million Instagram followers with her fashion content, sharing over 1,500 posts where she wore outfits from the biggest designers in the world. Atef claimed she could help invest people's money in the stock market and give them a return of up to 200%. Victims handed over $40,000 with the expectation that they would see high returns. However, the scammed investors never saw saw a profit on their money or even a return on the original amount. Atef was arrested alongside her husband, Bilal Mahmood, and her sister-in-law and sister-in-law's husband. Police received reports that the four scammers, Atef, her husband, and her former in-laws, pretended to own a group of companies that operated across various sectors like real estate, vehicles, and securities trading. Atef's mother posted several live streams claiming that thugs kidnapped her daughter. She also claimed that Atef's daughter was endangered, but authorities clarified they arrested Atef over the fraud allegations. Atef's mother also claimed that Mahmoud had access to all of Atef's bank accounts and was behind the fraud. Mahmoud's family initially claimed he'd taken his own life, but later, news broke he had been arrested. Before entering police custody, he had been hiding out in a rented apartment. Atef filed for a divorce from her husband following interventions from her family. Her legal team hoped the divorce certificate would persuade prosecutors that she had nothing to do with her husband's scheme. She alleged that she had no idea of the fraudulent behavior her husband carried out through her accounts. Rumors circulated that Mahmoud paid $345 million in cryptocurrency through the fraud, but his lawyer denied those claims. 16 people reported Atef, Mahmoud, and Atef's sister-in-law to the Cairo Security Directorate. The investigation is ongoing. With all of these claims of innocence, these Egyptian scammers must have been living in denial. Number one, no coming back. 
Model and influencer Courtney Clenny had a massive amount of followers on her social media accounts, but that couldn't save her after a fight with her boyfriend turned deadly. From the outside, Clenny and her boyfriend, Christian Ombumseli, seemed perfect. Clenny was a successful social media influencer, and Ombumseli was a cryptocurrency trader. They lived in a luxury Miami apartment, but their lives were very different behind the scenes. Clenny and Ombumseli often fought, sometimes in public, and there were times when their arguments became violent. In April 2022, they had a fight in their apartment that ended with Clenny going after Umbumseli with a knife. Unfortunately for Umbumseli, the results were expected and catastrophic. Following the fatal incident, Clenny went to rehab in Hawaii for her substance issues and post-traumatic stress disorder. Her time in Hawaii was cut short when police arrested the influencer, assisting the U.S. Marshal Service and following through on an arrest warrant issued by Miami-Dade County in Florida. Prosecutors wanted to keep Clenny behind bars as she was a flight risk. The model rose to fame via her OnlyFans account, a job she could do anywhere in the world. If she left the country, she would still be able to make more than enough money to support herself. Clenny made $966,692 on the Racy website in 2020 and $1.8 million in 2021, as well as the money she pulled in from her other social media accounts. Clenny's defense attorneys argued she acted in self-defense. The couple's relationship was often tumultuous. Some of Clenny's Instagram posts showed bruises from Umbumseli's on her hands. During the investigation, other incidents from before Umbumseli's passing came to the surface. Clenny was arrested in Las Vegas in 2021 after throwing a glass at Umbumseli. Texts between the pair referenced other times she had attacked him, having used a sharp weapon to cut his leg and hitting him with a phone. Despite their issues, the couple moved from Texas to Miami, but things didn't improve. Umbumseli started recording Clenny's outbursts, including a video of her hurting him in an elevator. After Umbumseli passing and before Clenny's arrest, she made some suspicious money movements. She transferred $1,134,000, $121,000, and $50,000 from her accounts to her father's. She performed the transfers on April 12, less than two weeks after Umbumseli's passing. Clenny and her legal team tried to get her released on bond after her trial and during the hearing. The defense claimed she acted in self-defense. Clenny's father, Kim Clenny, said his daughter's net worth was far lower than than what was reported. In his testimony, he contended Clenny had $375,000 equity in her house and $11,000 to her name. Prosecutors alleged Clenny once had $2 million in her account, but her father said she used most of that money to buy a house. Additionally, his daughter spent over $35,000 on rehab and a considerable amount went toward criminal defense fees. Kim Clenny explained that his daughter wired her money to him for safeguarding as she didn't always make the best financial decisions. Clenny trusted her father with the money as he he was a financial advisor. Prosecutors believe the money movements confirmed their suspicions that Kenny was a flight risk. The prosecution accused Kim Clenny of lying to protect his daughter, something he firmly denied. A representative from OnlyFans made it clear they would not allow Clenny to return to the site should she get out of jail on bond. The medical examiner told the court Umbumseli had just one wound to his chest. At the time of her arrest, Clenny said she threw the knife. During the trial, the prosecution asked the medical examiner if he thought the injury was the result of a thrown knife, which the medical examiner said would be highly unlikely. Miami judge Laura Sheeran Cruz denied Clenny's request to be released from jail before the trial, citing that Clenny was clearly behind the assault. The court didn't find Clenny's claim of self-defense credible with the evidence presented in the hearing. The case is ongoing. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comment section what you think are the most annoying things that influencers do.